Welcome to Biomedical Engineers TV. While we continue with this patient monitoring series videos, before you proceed to this video, I encourage you to watch the first two videos, titled with Patient Monitoring Classification and Patient Monitor Parameter Definitions Part 1, which will guide you to complete monitoring system systematically. Let's start with invasive blood pressure monitoring. Arterial blood pressure is most accurately measured invasively through an arterial line. Invasive arterial pressure measurement with intravascular cannulas involves direct measurement of arterial pressure by placing a cannula needle in an artery, usually radial, femoral or brachial. The maximum pressure reached during cardiac injection is called systolic pressure and the minimum pressure occurring at the end of ventricular relaxation is termed as diastolic pressure. The mean arterial pressure over one cardiac cycle is approximated by adding one third of the pulse pressure to the diastolic pressure. All blood pressure measurements are made with reference to the atmospheric pressure. Let's advance towards cardiac output monitoring. The direct method of pressure measurement is used when the highest degree of absolute accuracy, dynamic response and continuous monitoring is required. The method is also used to measure the pressure in deep regions inaccessible by indirect means. For direct measurement, a catheter or needle type probe is inserted through a vein or artery to the area of interest. Two types of probes can be used. One type is a catheter tip probe in which the sensor is mounted on the tip of a probe and the pressure exerted on it are converted to the proportional electrical signals. The other is the fluid filled catheter type which transmits the pressure exerted on its fluid filled column to an external transducer. This transducer converts the exerted pressure to electrical signals. There is one more cardiac method I'd like to mention i.e. non-invasive cardiac output. Non-invasive cardiac output monitoring system is a non-invasive bioreactance technology. Cardiac output and cardiac index measurements obtained by NICOM do not correlate with invasive FIC or thermodilution measurements in patients with ADHF. Let's move towards ETCO2 monitoring. The capnograph is the waveform that shows how much CO2 is present at each phase of the respiratory cycle and it normally has a rectangular shape. Capnography also measures and displays the respiratory rate. Changes in respiratory rate and tidal volume are displayed immediately as changes in the waveform and ETCO2. Types of ETCO2 sensors are side stream, and mainstream sensors. Mostly, side stream sensors are used in ET patients for most accurate measurements. Let's know about real-time EEG monitoring. EEG was originally developed as a bedside monitor for adult intensive care. EEG is based upon conventional electroencephalography that is recorded with two or four scalp electrodes depicting the amplitude of the raw EEG on a time-compressed semi-logarithmic scale. Amplitude Integrated EEG is an easily accessible technique to monitor the electrocortical activity in preterm and term infants in neonatal NICUs. This method was first used to monitor newborns after asphyxia, providing information about future neurological outcomes. The EEG is also helpful to select newborns who benefit from cooling. Let's wrap up this video with BIS monitoring. Bispectral index monitoring systems allow anesthesia professionals the ability to access processed EEG information as a measure of the effect of certain anesthetics during the care of patients they select to monitor. The clinical impact of BIS monitoring has been demonstrated in a variety of randomized controlled trials that reveal the potential for BIS monitoring to facilitate improvements, including patient safety in anesthesia care. 
In the next video, we will cover other parameters like NMT, AGM, IOBP, and drug calculations in patient monitors. Thank you for watching Biomedical Engineers TV. See you in the next video.